Look, Alex. Yes. What's happening to the world population? It's just going up like that, right? There's not enough space left on Earth. You've got all of these conflicts around the world for limited resources. Isn't it time that we basically try to stop the population growing and take a few people off Earth and take them somewhere else? So I actually really strongly disagree with that. And one of the myths that we have about population growth is that we are experiencing exponential growth. We've got 7 billion people on the planet today, and that in a couple of years, it'll be 14 billion, and then 28 billion, and then 56 billion. That's actually not true. What demographers have shown is that as countries become wealthier, they start producing fewer children. And we are expecting to see a maximum of about 11 billion people sometime around the year 2100. And then demographers are predicting that population growth will start to cease and actually decline. And we're, and we're already seeing it in countries like Japan, which have been shrinking for the past seven yeah, but what years. But about, what about India? I mean, the Indians are cranking out the babies, right? I mean, there's no, <laughs> there's no one-child policy in India, right? In That's, fact, it's like a seven-child policy, no? That, and and uh, there are a few countries on Earth that have explosive uh, growth rates. India could be one of them, especially Africa, a lot of African countries, some in Southeast Asia. But here's the issue. If you look around the world, look at Europe, look at the United States, look at Australia, look at Japan, population growth has collapsed. What we look at as demographers is a fertility rate of 2.1. Every woman on average needs to have 2.1 children. Why two? Why not two? Because some people die. 2.1 is the replacement rate. Throughout all of the European Union, all 28 nations, the replacement rate is below 2.1 in every country. It's below 2.1 in the United States. It's really the population is shrinking and Japan is already seeing the problems of it because they have a very old population and very few younger people. Okay, okay, all right, fine. So what you're saying is, you know, these rich countries are not having babies anymore and that's gonna kind of compensate for the fact that in Ethiopia your population has grown by 30% in 10 years, right? But what about the fact that, say for example, in, in Sub-Saharan Africa, I was in Addis Ababa in December, like the desert's coming south, mm -hmm. progressively coming south, taking up more and more arable land and forcing populations mm -hmm. to concentrated areas where inter-ethnic conflict grows. What sure. about that? So one of, the, one of the trends that has happened throughout the world is that as countries become wealthier and more educated and have more, especially when women are educated, and we have more birth control, populations start to fall dramatically. The biggest example of this is Iran. In Iran in the year 1980, the average woman had seven children. Seven children in 1980 in Iran. In 2006, it fell to 1.9. It can happen like that. It can happen very quickly, depending on the nation and depending on policies that are put into place. Give me some policies. Convince me that there are policies that make me feel comfortable with this. Educate your women. Okay. Provide them with birth control. Have proper governance proper infrastructure so that the whole society become, can become wealthier because the people who tend to have the most children don't live in the cities, they live out in rural areas. So when you bring the wealth up of the whole country, everybody starts having fewer children. How fast is this gonna happen if we introduce these policies? Hard to say, but demographers seem to be pretty unanimous that around 2100 is when we're gonna peak and then start to decline. The world population will probably start declining after it hits 11 billion. I'll be 121 years old in 2100. So. You better keep, yeah, keep me, or yeah, we'll be in touch then. We'll talk about it then. Okay. I wonder how we'll communicate. It could be kind of interesting. Telepathically at that point. There you go. You know what? You have convinced me. You have convinced me that the right. world is not overpopulated. I'm gonna burn the myth. Congratulations. Now, this might work for you. Another thing, I, so I live on planes. I'm constantly flying around the world. And I'm always, and I get sick on the plane, right? Because yep. the person sitting next to me sneezes on me and my food, right? So I get really, I get really, really sick. And then I, then I read these stories about these pandemics, you know, like yes. Ebola in West Africa and all those kinds of problems. Aren't we all gonna die from an epidemic? Shouldn't we just like get off the planet before it kills all of us? Well, 
if we leave our planet, we're going to take all of our diseases with us to the new planet. <laughs> so that won't work. But here's why I'm not so worried about pandemics. The one th there's two things that I'm legitimately worried about. One is influenza. If influenza mutates, we could have another Spanish flu event. Back in 1918, the Spanish flu killed more people than World War I, and it killed mostly young people. That's scary. Antibiotic resistance is scary, but we are fighting them. The way that we're fighting them is that scientists are looking at new ways of combating antibiotic resistance that don't involve antibiotics. We're using nanomaterials, we're using uh, viruses that can kill bacteria, we're using nanoparticles. We are trying to attack the problem in multiple ways. Another thing that we're doing is that we're looking at creating a universal flu vaccine so that you don't have to get a seasonal flu shot every year, so it will work against all flus. But if you look at history, history also supports the idea that we're not all going to die of an epidemic. Back 700 years ago, you guys might have known of the Black Plague, wiped out one third of Europe here, 1350. And yet, we survived. We had no medication, we had nothing, and yet we survived. We had small... Well, 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 yes. We survived. Not if you died, you didn't survive. But so what about these lovely people in the audience? How many of these will survive and how many will die? One third, if that were to happen. <laughs> but not today, because uh, the, pl okay. the plague is actually very, very susceptible to penicillin, believe it or not. And so today it's not much of a problem. Back then it was. Smallpox killed 500 million people just in the 20th century alone. Today, it killed zero because of a vaccination campaign, thanks to the World Health Organization. AIDS, HIV, has killed uh, tens of millions of people. It used to be a death sentence when you got HIV. Today, in the developed world, you can live a, a relatively normal life, even can though you're HIV infected. I've got another question. Yes. What about antibiotic resistance? Antibiotic resistance is going to be a problem. It already kind of is a problem, but we are tackling it in multiple ways. Sometimes we're tackling it uh, before it even infects a patient. So you go into a hospital room and the materials will be antibacterial materials. So if the bacteria lands on a surface, the surface will kill the bacteria using silver nanoparticles. How expensive is this technology? Well, um, it's being developed by dozens of different labs around the world. And so eventually the prices were going to come down because everybody's researching it. Everyone's afraid of this uh, possibility and so scientists are working on it. So, if you're in a rich country, you'll be okay, but if you're in a poor country, you won't survive? I don't think so, because even with a country like uh, in Africa, we had several countries that had Ebola, right? Yeah. And we actually sent people from the United States there to help contain the problem. We don't want it coming to Europe, we don't want it coming to the United States. I think as long as the World Health Organization and rich countries will respond to outbreaks like Ebola, we can put a clamp down on it before it spreads globally. And how likely is that? Depends on the administration. <laughs> but I think that it is likely. I think that when, when if you are a government leader and you see that a country next to you is having an outbreak, it is in your best interest to pitch in and make sure it doesn't come into your border. That's a really good argument. Finally, he's got a good argument for me. Okay. <laughs> All right. I think you've managed to convince me again. So, what should I do, everybody? Should I burn it? <laughs> it's time to burn the myth. You're good. Thank Seriously. You. Thank you. Thank you. They told me, this guy's really good. You're going to have a problem with this guy. He's going to have an answer for everything. And I was like, yeah, whatever. I'm a clever guy. I'll prove it. All right. Thank you. But I think I've got you on this one. All right. Right? All right. I mean, they're everywhere, right? Yeah. There may be even people in the room right now that look like humans, but they're actually aliens. <laughs> and I mean, we, we all saw Independence Day. We know how that went, right? Oh, my God. I'm, get, I'm having a... Oh, <laughs> I'm having an anxiety attack just thinking about it. Now... I mean, aliens, they're coming. They're going to take us. We're, we're, we're done. Yep. So I have to bust everyone's bur uh, bubble. I actually don't think that intelligent life is particularly common in the universe. And if it is, it is so far away, we'll never, ever find it. Here's why. Consider this. The universe is only 13.8 billion years old. Now, that, doesn't, that sounds like an enormous number. 
But let's put that in the context of Earth. Earth is four and a half billion years old. In that time, it took from the formation of the Earth, from this big ball of lava to cool down, that took about a billion years. Life evolved around 3.8 billion years ago. From 3.8 billion years ago to 800 million years ago. So that's a span of 3 billion years. Well, that's too many numbers, man. Just keep it simple okay. for an idiot like me. Come on. <laughs> yeah, like, Life was dominated gosh. by microbes. So if you were to come to Earth a billion years ago, you wouldn't have seen anything. You'd had to have your microscope out and looking because you couldn't see anything. Animals, mammals didn't evolve until 300 million years ago. Humans, about 50,000 years ago with Neanderthals. And now, how smart have we been to communicate with other aliens? We've only been able to do that for about 100 years. So think of all that, that huge history, 13.8 billion years of universal history, and only in the past 100 have we been able to communicate with other life forms. We have no reason to believe that life, if it evolved on other planets, wouldn't be exactly the same way. And that if we go out to another planet, the only thing we'll probably find is a bacteria. It's an alien, right? It's an alien bacteria. So it, I, it could combine with my previous myth, right? That basically the alien bacteria is going to kill everybody. <laughs> it's, it's possible. That's a war, war of the world scenario, maybe. <laughs> okay, audience, who's seen a UFO, un unidentified flying object? You see, they're hiding from us. You see, <laughs> they're deliberately they're not going to admit it, right? Yeah, and I bet that, I bet a few of them have got like spacesuits underneath their like human clothes. Yeah, right. And they pull off their face, and like suddenly like. That <laughs> alien here's appears. the thing. Here's the thing that really gets me. People have said that well, what what aliens are going to do is they're going to come to Earth because they are like nomads. They're pirates. They need more stuff. And that doesn't make any sense to me because any, any advanced civilization that has made it to Earth has traveled hundreds of, hundreds of uh, millions of light years to get here. They've mastered interstellar travel. They've mastered wormhole travel, if that even exists. They have the most productive industry that we've ever imagined. And they think, we're going to go to Earth and we're going to steal their pencils and laptop computers. <laughs> Okay, one more, one more. I think I may get you on. I think I may have All you right. find. They run out of natural resources, food, food, liquids that they consume, and they find this green, beautiful planet, and they're like, ha ha, they have lots of resources and humanoids that we can eat. <laughs> what about that? I think that a, an organ, a, a civilization that is that advanced will have mastered recycling. They will have mastered biological production of materials. Instead of using oil, you can use algae to produce plastics. They've dematerialized. We used to have supercomputers that filled whole rooms that did basically nothing. And now you have a supercomputer right here in your pocket, which takes almost no material at all. So I think a civilization that's that bright is not going to need to come here and take our pencils. This is why they invited him, just to embarrass me. I, I think I should burn it, right? Because like, he's totally bossed the stage. All right, you win, I lose. <laughs> it's time to burn the myth. Thank you very much for coming.